Uh, former US President Donald Trump and 18 of his allies have been charged in the state of Georgia for election interference. He's been charged with 13 counts, including violating Georgia's Racketeering Act, solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, conspiracy to impersonate a public officer and conspiracy to commit forgery. In a phone call, Trump allegedly pressured Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, to find enough votes for him to win Georgia. We have won this election in Georgia. The people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I know you don't. No, no, you don't. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a criminal offense. I just want to find 11,780 because we won the state. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. If found guilty of some of the charges, the former president could face between 5 and 20 years in prison. Donald Trump, of course, denies any wrongdoing and has called the charges a witch hunt. Joining us now is American political and communications consultant Liz Mayer. Good to see you in the studio this afternoon, Liz. What do you make then of what's happened today? Uh, I won't say the word on television, but would it be right to say Donald Trump is in deep bleep? Yes. Indeed. Uh, yeah, we'll have to find some synonym for really? that. Really? Yeah, I think, this is, I think this is the big one. This is the big one that people have been waiting to drop. Um, the first indictment that you had that came out of New York City, I think most people are not taking that seriously, including most Democrats. Most people think that's really conjured up. The one that you have that's in Florida relating to the documents, that's very serious because as more has come out on that, it has become clear that more and more was done really to obstruct and to continue committing things that look very much like criminal offenses. So that one's quite serious as well. Um, the indictment that you have in Washington, D.C. that relates to the January 6th insurrection obviously is serious. Uh, that is also, I think, pushing some somewhat new terrain legally. And so that's a little bit harder to know exactly how it's going to go, although it is Washington, D.C., and I think it would be pretty easy to get a jury there to convict Trump of really just about anything mm. you came up with. What was it, 96 percent voted Democrat in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, that's right. Now, that's not to say that Democrats are incapable of being impartial here, but if you want to pick a city where it's going to be tougher for Trump, Clearly, Washington, D.C. is going to be one of them. But this is the really serious one for a couple of reasons. One, we're not talking about federal charges here or federal indictments. This is state level. So he, if he were to get back into office, you know, there's always been this question, can he pardon himself? Well, first of all, we don't know the answer to that. But in this case, we know he very definitively cannot because this is state level stuff. This is not federal. Um, in addition, this is happening in a state that he lost. Um, what's at issue is the fact that he lost. This is a state that has voted for anti-Trump Republicans. So you do have plenty of Republicans in the state who have been willing to part ways with him, stick with their principles. And I think that raises some really interesting questions about what the jury pool could look like, because you will have some people who are inherently not inclined to believe him, not inclined necessarily to uh, take his word for things. In addition to that, though, you have some people who are more conservative inclined, very different to Washington, D.C., but who have seen through a lot of the lies and the obfuscation previously. And I think that's quite dangerous for him. I was also reading that uh, when he comes to court, he's likely to have his mugshot taken this time. Yeah, Before, so it was fingerprints. So this makes it different again. Yeah. So in a, in a number of ways, Georgia has very different rules here. Um, it has a broader, we're dealing with a statute called RICO. Different states have different versions of this, but this was this is legislation that was put in place to deal essentially with mob style racketeering corruption, right? Um, Georgia has a pretty expansive RICO law. It's going to be a lot easier to convict any of these 19 people who have been charged under that Georgia law than it would be in some states. But in addition, when you look at the underlying crimes that are being alleged, there's plenty of stuff out there publicly that demonstrates that that happened. It's not even like they're relying on some sort of super secret evidence that nobody's seen to date. Hmm. They've got a lot on him. And so he's dealing with a bad legal environment just in terms of the legal framework he's up against. Um, he's dealing with a bad fact set, including the audio that you played. And he's also doing this in a state that, yes, does elect Republicans, 
But, you know, Brad Raffensperger, who's on that tape, who he's pressuring, he specifically went against Brad Raffensperger and tried to get him out of office in the midterm elections in 2022. He explicitly exhorted his followers to vote against Brad Raffensperger. Brad Raffensperger won his primary mm. and he stayed in office. So did the Georgia governor, who Trump also campaigned against and ran against, won his primary, stayed in office. This is not a great environment for him to be in. What Donald Trump might say is that these are rhinos, these are Republicans in name only, and actually what this tape shows is nothing of the sort in terms of him trying to invent ballots. He <laughs> genuinely believes that he won that state and he was saying you need to look in every nook and cranny to find yeah. where these votes that might well, have mysteriously disappeared. So, have yeah, so his argument about that particular comment, the 11,780, is that that was an aspirational statement not actually urging somebody to do something criminal. But the problem is, when you look at the crimes that are being alleged, that's only one of them. You can say, OK, fine, that was aspirational. But there is plenty that has already been out there publicly that hasn't been dependent on subpoena power or anything that the prosecutors have got in this case that shows that you had people who were tied up in this orbit who were messing around with voting machines. That's illegal. You also have people who were sworn in under oath and who then gave false testimony. That's perjury. You also have people who sign documents under oath. That's perjury. And once you tie all of those things together with a very broad racketeering statute, it makes it very easy. Certainly, it may be hard to convict Trump himself just because I don't think, I mean, we have no precedent of doing that, right? Mm. All of this is unprecedented in the American system. Mm. People may find, may find it just a bridge too far to convict the former president. But I think if you're any of those other 18 people, You've got to be very, very worried today because it's very, very conceivable. That is, that is interesting, though, because all of those other points that you point to, those are about the other individuals, not about Donald Trump himself. It looks like the, the only thing really pointing directly to Donald Trump is the, uh, are these audio recordings. But you don't, under the RICO statute in Georgia, it doesn't have to point directly to Trump. As long as he's tied up in and as long as it is furthering the conspiracy that he's a part to, you don't need to have him directing it. This is the whole point. RICO okay. statutes are used to go against the mob. Now, when Rudy Giuliani, ironically charged here with the thing that he used to use to prosecute mob bosses, when Rudy Giuliani went after John Gotti, nobody ever had to actually prove that John Gotti personally told the person who killed somebody as a mafia hitman to do it. In fact, you would never be able to show that because the whole way that the mob is structured mm -hmm. is specifically to avoid that. Nonetheless, so, John Gotti went to jail and Rudy Giuliani put him there. If so, you're Rudy so, so Giuliani, all... you've got to be very worried today because you're being hit with exactly the same side of type of statute that you used to put that guy away. All the district attorney here in this case needs to do is prove something against one or two of these, uh, of these dozen plus individuals. And they all go to prison? Not necessarily. I think it depends a lot on the fact pattern and the specifics. But I will tell you that with regard to some of the things that are alleged, it's not something where just one or two people were doing them. There were a lot of people that were caught up in this. Now, the president's going to argue with much of this, he was relying on legal advice that was given. And that may be enough to sort of raise that small, small glimmer of doubt mm. that would be enough to cause him to be found not guilty. But I think for a lot of these other people, they are well and truly cooked. Um, we shall see what happens. But I don't think this is going to be a particularly difficult case to prove for a lot of the people who are under indictment at this point. For the president, like I say, I think there's a lot that's very open and shut here. But you may find that there is, and it only takes one juror out of 12, you may find that one juror feels that they just can't quite get there to vote to convict a former president. And that may be the way that he gets out of this. But I think this is a very serious case. I think this in the Florida one, um, despite the fact that they are happening in areas that are far friendlier to Republicans and you have a lot more Trump voters, I think these are the two that are really serious and could really cause him th the biggest downfall. Wow. Gosh. Well, Liz Mayer, it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for um, your, your insight there. Yeah.